awesome like you know to be a part of the Panthers and being managed by Scotty Myers is a dream really like Scotty Myers is be my captain now manager and yeah I've got a lot of respect for you know him and, and all the whole whole crew. The Panthers would go on to beat the Stratford Scrappers and make another finals night. Two-time title holders the Nelson Tigers didn't see what hit them or where it came from when they took on the Great Britain Lions in their qualifying matchup. The Lions, making their tenth appearance here at the teams, were in devastating form and led by the man that's been the glue that has held the team together right from the start back in 2009, Frankie Wayman Jr. The British Lions blew the Nelsonians off the track in a display of sheer tactical brilliance and power hitting. Second last year, they were equally as tough beating Wanganui. Can you go one more step from last year? Yeah, we're up in sight. You know what I mean? It's teams racing. You've seen it. You've seen it over years. Anything can happen in teams racing. Great Britain, with a points haul of 330, would top the qualifying points table and book a spot in another final. Six times the Wanganui Warriors had finished as runners-up at the NZ Superstock Teams Championship. And although missing last year, they were back in 2018. Their run to the finals would be hard going, up against the two-time defending champion, the Hawks Bay Hawkeyes. And even though the team was completely rehashed from last year's winning side, they were still too good for the Warriors, taking the win 150 to 45. They too booked their Sunday night with a win against the Waikato Wanderers in their second heat. Good out there. It was real good. That felt good, yeah. That was bloody good. <laughs> I'm a bit speechless, but that was a good feeling. Just car was mint, I was happy, just felt good out there and it was just a good feeling. The boys blocked up well and it was just good to be a part of it. Yeah, loved it. It was not so much a warm welcome back for the Waikato Wanderers to Robertson Holden International Speedway. The two-time champs making a return after five years away. Not exactly rolling out the welcome mat, although trying to roll Jared Wade with the Rees family and the Gisborne Giants. He will come through. Oh, he's gone for the attack. Might have been better off keeping on running. Giants coming out ahead in the heat after a long wait to get out onto the racetrack. Wade. Wade. 140 to 55. Was it hard waiting all this time? I mean, we're halfway through the night. You've got your first race under the belt. Extremely. But in saying that, we could dissect how the points are going and most of the teams are low scoring across the board so it takes a little bit of pressure off to get those top points. So I mean it's hard to say but that's a good start for us. The win in Heat 2 against the wounded Nelson Tigers, 165 to 30, meant that Gisborne made the finals as well. First match up on Sunday, the Rotorua Rebels versus the Bay Park Busters. Kerry Remnant explains. What would it mean to win this deal? Oh, uh, it'd be awesome. I I've won it before but some of these guys haven't, so bring the new guys through and it'd be awesome. So this is the first uh, semi-final for Tier 2. It is the Bay Park Busters versus the Rotorua Rebels. Watch for Kerry Remnant, the uh, veteran from Mount Monganui for the Bay Park Busters, and watch too for the 87 there of David Ellsworth sitting alongside the 98 of Mark Costello. Costello it is, it's got away to a very good early start. 12 laps to decide who will progress further into the finals of the NZ Superstock Teams Championships for 2018. At the moment, Costello just getting away from from uh, Dave Ellsworth, his brother, uh, Lance in the uh, Rebels as well. Lance, in fact, just getting fed up into the concrete there. Oh, and heavy contact there uh, between uh, Ellsworth and uh, one of the um, busters has gone over. That's number 25, Scott McEwen. Now, he had a bit of help. Have a look at it on the replay. 94 there is Dale Stewart. And McEwen just gets into the side of the 77R. That's uh, Lance Ellsworth. Here it is from a different angle, just catching the uh, tail end of it there. That's brought out the first red light. As we have a look on the Lucas Oils replay, set to go again, Costello trying to be chased down by Ellsworth. So not too much change in the early going of this one. 12 laps to decide this tier two semi-final. It is the Bay Park Busters versus the Rotorua Rebels. Neighboring tracks, but no love lost there. And Costello it is, it's got away. Now this is the point situation, you get 100 points for first, you get 40 for second, 25 for third, 20 for fourth, and so on. 
Number 19, Kerry Remnant from uh, the Busters, just trying to fix up the 77 there of Lance Ellsworth. Making his way through though is Costello, still being chased down by the 87 of Dave Ellsworth. So that's the battle at the front of the field for the moment. It is the Bay Park Busters in the front, Rotorua Rebels in second place. A bit of a close quarter action here is uh, the block coming in here from Lance Ellsworth trying to stop the progress of uh, Costello. Doesn't manage to do so, so that means Dale Stewart now inherits the front running. The 94 remnant trying to stop him and misses it completely. Stewart heads on to the grass. Trying to go around the outside of them is Ellsworth. Ellsworth gets balked as well, and then Stewart cops a big hit from Kyle Fraser from the Busters. Meantime, the 23 goes uh, back out into the front. That's Lance Ashton. So, it is the Rotorua Rebels now that have hit the front of this one. 12 laps, anything can happen, and uh, usually does here at uh, the NZ Superstock Championships. Everyone just sitting, lying in wait. Remember, you can't attack from the infield, you can't attack from the grass, but you can attack by lying in wait. Kerry Remnant, one of the veterans of the Bay Park Busters, he's awake up to this, and he puts in the block and tries to slow the progress of Lance Ashton, manages to do so, but spins them both round, and that means crawling round the outside of them now is the 39 of Kyle Fraser, so maybe Fraser into the front, 77. Uh, Lance Ellsworth wants to have something to say about that, and then coming in for a secondary shot there was Costello. So it's all the busters at the moment. Remnant getting into the side of the 77 of Ellsworth. Meantime, the 39, Kyle Fraser, continues on his way. 94 caught up in it as well. That's Dale Stewart. 77, Ellsworth in there. Remnant there as well. He's been a busy boy in this early stage, but it's allowed Kyle Fraser to just get out and run away. He's looking for the 100 points here. A little bit of cat and mouse between the 77 of Lance Ellsworth and uh, Kerry Remnant. And now they put the squeeze on as uh, the 39 comes through. Kyle Fraser. Dale Stewart trying to put Remnant to the concrete and that allows the 39 to get away. Escape and back into the front goes Fraser. White flag out, so are we going to see the first win going here to the Bay Park Busters out of uh, their neighbours, and that is the Rotorua Rebels. It is Fraser out in the front. At the moment, it is Lance Ashton chasing hard. There he is, the 23R from Rotorua, but he's not going to stop Kyle Fraser. And Kyle Fraser, if he can stay off the concrete long enough, the run to the checkered flag. Ashton got close, but Fraser gets the 100 points. Ashton would go through in second place, and then it would be another buster, and that was Mark Costello. So it would mean, I would think, that the Bay Park Busters will win this one, the Tier 2 semi-final, 135 to 60. So first blood here at Robertson Holden International Speedway for the 2018 NZ Superstock teams goes to the Bay Park Busters. Here's the early action. This is number 25 getting upside down, and this was very early in the piece, and that was Scott McEwen. So 39, Kyle Fraser with the chequered flag. He wins here in Palmerston North. Well, as you can see, 17,000 people packed into uh, the Robertson Holden International Speedway for the NZ Superstock Teams Championships for 2018. Big shout out to Event Tech, Chris Morton and his team for bringing us the footage from the qualifying. This is the Stratford Scrappers versus the Wellington Wildcats. This is 7th uh, versus 8th. It's the second of the Tier 2 um, semi-finals. It is a 22 of Richard Gaskin gets out to an early lead and uh, shown the concrete straight away. I think it was the 26 there of Mitch Vickery from the Scrappers. 82 is Paul Johnson. Another one of the uh, standouts for the Stratford Scrappers. Last year, the Scrappers finishing seventh, the Wellington Wildcats finishing eighth. So pretty much a repeat of what we saw in 2017. Watch out there for Hilton Park, at number 321, just getting shown the concrete by the 75 from the Scrappers, and that is Chris Shearer. So this is car number 82, this is Paul Johnson. Remember to uh, win the event, it's 100 points. To get second, it's 40. Let me go down to 25. Uh, some problems there for the five from uh, Wellington by the look of it. Just gets himself off the wall and going again. Oh, and a heavy, heavy contact and over we go and the red lights come on. A little bit of help there from uh, Gary Johnson for the number seven of Shane Davis. 
riding the concrete hard and then finally just tipping up onto its side. Here it is in the slow motion. Davey's shown the concrete by Johnson. Bit of an impact there for Johnson as well. From a different angle, you can see just how hard the impact is. You see why these guys wear all the new protective gear. 26 gets away. This is Mitch Vickery from the Stratford Scrappers. Trying to get around the 321 of Hilton Parker. And Hilton Parker's going to do the Tommy tip over. Well, it just caught him in the uh, rear quarter of the car. I'd like to see a replay of that one. It was very slow. Here's Vickery. There is Hilton Parker down on the pole line. Have a look at this, just nails his right rear and it's enough to spin Parker around. And the left side of the car digs in and over he goes. So we're back to a red light situation. We're just waiting for the restart there is number 22 and that's Richard Gaskin. Two stock car titles under his belt. Away he goes. Just up ahead of him, the recovered number five and that is Keegan Levine. And then it is a trio of Stratford Scrappers. Levine getting into the side of the 52, and that is Gary Johnson, and they've come to a halt. The racing continues, 75 now, Carl Shearer inherits the front running, I think, and he's got protection as they work their way through turns two and three. This is Richard Gaskin. You just get the feeling he's lying in wait, trying to do a little bit of a blocking exercise here for the Wellington Wildcats. And straight into the back of Gaskin goes Carl Shearer. And it just slows his progress a little bit. You still see the five there up on the wall. This is Richard Gaskin. He's got going again. 82 coming around to clean him up is Paul Johnson. Just keeping an eye on him. The 75, Shearer has another go and puts Gaskin onto the infield. This is good news for the Stratford Scrappers because the 26 continues to lead it. That's Mitch Vickery. And he is pretty much unchallenged now because in second and third place are Stratford Scrappers as well. So they're going to clean out the Wildcats here. In fact, I think there's only one Wildcat still going and that would be Richard Gaskin and he's wounded. One lap to go for number 26 and that is Mitch Vickery. And he is on to his winning ways here in the second tier two semi-final. It's all the Stratford Scrappers, the Wildcats. In fact, I think Gaskin's now gone off onto the infield, so they're not going to score any points at all. It's 100 points for the win, and picking up that 100 points will be Mitch Vickery. In second place, it'll be Paul Johnson for the Stratford Scrappers, and in third place, it's Gary Johnson, and in fourth place, it's Carl Shearer. 185 to zero. That's a clean out of the Wellington side here at Palmerston North. Here is some action in the super slow-mo. The 82 there going into the job is Paul Johnson, and he spins around the number five of Keegan Levine. But it wasn't all done with yet for the Wellington Wildcats. Shane Davis gets upside down, courtesy of the number 52, and that was Gary Johnson. And then just the slightest of rollovers, but they all count. Hilton Parker puts it on its side as well. So a clean out for the Stratford Scrappers here. And the winner, Mitch Vickery, with the chequered flag and the big crowd absolutely love that. Coming up, we've got the Tier 1 semi-finals. It's Great Britain versus the 17-time champions, the Palmerston North Panthers. So Great Britain in the blue cars, Palmerston North, 590. Uh, the Red Walker today, it is black, that is Wayne Hemi, uh, but the best of the starts goes to the Englishman. They're on board here with Jack Myers taking in the uh, 53 productions on board. There he is, 88, son of a famous father in Scott. Scott is the manager for the team here for the Palmerston North Panthers, a stalwart of stock car racing in this part of the woods. So out in front is the 217 and that's Lee Fairhurst from Great Britain. You're on board here with Jack Myers is uh, looked like the um, 37 of Chris Cowley uh, just welcoming Myers to uh, Robertson uh, Holden International Speedway here for the NZ 2018 Teams Nationals. Bang! And that's a little bit more than a kiss, isn't it? That Myers survives it and then puts uh, Frankie Wayneman Jr. into the wall as well. And you're on board here. Spins himself out in doing so, though. So that's quite costly. Gee, that was an interesting situation. We had English, one English car facing the wrong way as uh, the 217 of Lee Fairhurst split them. This is Chris Cowley. Wayne Hemi on the outside of him. Hemi looking to show him the wall. Cowley does it all on his own. Hemi comes in to finish him off what teams racing is all about remember it's 100 points for the win it goes down to 40 to 25 and then to 20. number one for the palmerston north panthers is the current champion that's william humphreys right in behind him it is the 217 for great britain 
That is uh, Lee Fairhurst, a veteran of uh, the Stock Car Teams Nationals here in New Zealand. Giving Humphreys all the attention in the world and then going in for the kill is Wayman by the look of it. Wayman in the 515, the instigator of getting Great Britain into the team's uh, championship since 2009. He's been the glue that holds this one together, but not holding it together is the 217. And ending up upside down is Lee Fairhurst, and he puts it back on the wheels again. And it looked to me like Wayne Hemi came in for a second chance at that. Now, uh, let's have a look at it again on the replay. It is Humphreys in the front, then it is Wayman. Hemi gets into the back of Wayman, and then the 217 just rides up over the top of Wayne Hemi. Now watch this, when they come back onto the ground, here it is from a different angle. Lee Fairhurst just along for the ride after he picks up the left front of Hemi. And then Hemi comes in for a second go as Fairhurst gets knocked back onto all four wheels again. Now that may come to haunt Wayne Hemi a little bit. He backs up and gets out of the way, but the 217 is still mobile as well as they continue their little battle. Meantime, it is the 1NZ of William Humphreys that continues to lead it. He's never won a team's title. He's won the New Zealand title. Frankie Wayman getting into the side of him and Chris Cowley involved as well. And Cowley spins his own man there. So the tactics go a little bit wrong here. There is the uh, resurgent Lee Fairhurst getting into the side of Jack Myers. You ride with Myers, it's Fairhurst up in front of him. Big hit as Myers tries to settle him into the concrete. Can't quite do it. And they head towards the infield. And a big, huge contact there between William Humphreys and for the second time tonight, Lee Fairhurst is upside down. Have a look at this on the replay. Big speed, big contact, and Fairhurst gets upside down again. And this time, make no mistake about it, the red lights do come on. And watching it all, taking in the Lucas Oil replay, was Jack Myers. Have a look at the altitude from William Humphreys. He hit him at full throttle. 515, Frankie Wayman Jr. I think there's only around about two of the Great British Lions still going. A lot of people thought that this might be the final. The Panthers versus the Lions hasn't turned out that way. Jack Myers getting in the mix again. Wayman trying to fix him up and in doing so, picking up a little bit of uh, damage to the right front as well. Myers lifts the fight another day. Cowley gets turned around by Wayne Hemi, so it's all Palmerston North at the moment. There is Myers, there is Hemi, there is Frankie Wayman Jr. Wayman Jr. gets into the wall all on his own and rips the right front wheel off. So that's the end of the very popular Englishman, I would think. Big front end damage on the 515 of Frankie Wayman Jr. And he will be off onto the infield. And that means that Palmerston North are going to clean sweep this one. You're on board here with Jack Myers as he slams into the back of Chris Cowley and pushes him out of the way. So Myers leaving a damaged Cowley well behind him as they work their way through turn three. Cowley now getting the treatment from number 591, and that is Wayne Hemi. Hemi, of course, commuting regularly from Australia, where he lives on the Gold Coast. Loves being part of the Palmerston North Panthers. Hasn't been in the team for quite some time, but more than making up for it here as he shows Cowley the concrete in no uncertain terms. And that's disabled the Englishman, and it might have damaged uh, the uh, Red Walker as well. Meantime, the race continues as the chicken flag comes out, and it is all Palmerston North. Jordan Deer, third in New Zealand in the Superstock Championships, gets the win from Jack Myers. The best of the Englishmen is Frankie Wayman in third. The Panthers win it 140 to 25. Have a look at some of the action in Super Slow Mo. This is Wayne Hemi drilling Chris Cowley. So to the victor go the spoils. Palmerston North Panthers win one-sided contest against the Great Britain Lions. Plenty more to come from the NZ Superstock Teams Championships here at Palmerston North. So the big match up here is the uh, darkness descends on Palmerston North. It's the Hawkeyes versus the Giants. We've sort of got a, a couple of new faces in the team, which is, uh, in a way, taking the pressure off. You know, uh, the fans expect a lot, but um, we're only expecting so much out of our newbies, and um, hey, we're, it doesn't mean we're going in half-hearted. We're, um, we're still 110% into it, and we've got expectations. So, um, yeah, the pressure's big. Yeah, I think we're under control. Well, it is an absolutely refreshed Hawks Bay Hawkeyes team up against the Gisborne Giants. Last year, the Hawkeyes were first, of course. The Giants ended up fifth. 
so the Giants doing better here in the uh, second tier one semi-final and it's the Giants that get away the best of all and of course they've got the Rees family out there they've got Peter and Ethan Rees and it's Peter Rees that's got out to an early lead by the look of it 66 there is um, Randall Tarrant chasing him down but at the moment it's the veteran he'd have plenty of fans here at Palmerston North the 136 is Matty West and already tangling up there is Reagan O'Brien and uh, the um, 45 of Nick Valance for Gisborne. So two go out, you're riding on board here taking the 53 production shots of Matty Wise in the 136. Meantime, it is still Gisborne in the front. This time looks like Ethan Rees goes into the lead. 41, Jason Long. Uh, a bit of a turncoat because he was, of course, with uh, Hawks Bay last year. So this is why this one's got a little bit of feeling with it. A little bit of a grudge match. Peter Rees getting turned around there by the uh, the 98 of Quentin Butcher. There is a the man we talked about before. We're taking the onboard pictures of Matty Wise on number 136. Currently sitting in second place. It'll be Jason Long from Gisborne in the front at the moment. Get back on board here with Wise. Nothing but a traffic jam up ahead of him. That's Peter Rees in the 10, uh, trying to put the block in and stopping uh, Long's progress. Manages to do so for a little while and getting a little bit of help there from Nick Valance as well. That's what Teams Racing's all about. You're back on board here with Matty Wise. And they gang up on Wise as it's now Ethan Rees that goes into the front. It's Peter's son. Wise getting a little bit more attention there from Rees. Back on board here with Wise. Just crowding him out. There is the number 10 of Peter Rees. 66, Tarrant trying to slow down the resurgent Peter Rees. Well, he is the team's master, isn't he? Is Peter Rees. He builds the cars. He drives them oh so hard. Off onto the infield goes the 45 of Nick Valance. Meantime, trying to thread the needle there and getting spun for his uh, uh, efforts was uh, Ethan Rees. So this now would be Jason Long, and he'd be the race leader now, I would think. And I mentioned that there's a bit of a grudge going on there between uh, Tarrant and also Rees. Rees there on the inside, number 10. And he was lucky he didn't tip over then. Uh, really got uh, fixed up by Randall Tarrant. In that one as well was uh, the 45 of Valance. Meantime, the race leader continues to be Jason Long. As we said, a Hawkeye last year, a Giant this year, O'Brien getting in a little bit of a tangle up there with another one of the Gisborne cars and coming in for uh, to finish him off was uh, Nick Valance in the 45. White flag out for the 41. Jason Long is going to rain on the parade of the Hawks Bay Hawkeyes because they finished first last year. They're not going to finish that far up this time. In fact, I think Gisborne's going to displace them here in the second of the Tier 1 semi-finals. The Gisborne Giants are going to carry the day. The 100 points are going to go to uh, Jason Long. In second place, it's going to be the Bay's Maddie Wise by the look of it. And for the second time, nearly getting upside down was Peter Rees being finished off there by uh, O'Brien. Both of them will end up on all four wheels as the checkered flag comes out. So it'll be Jason Long getting the win for Gisborne. So it is Long taking the win for the Giants. In second place, it's the Hawkeyes' Maddie Wise. Then it's Peter Rees and his son Ethan and Nick Valance for the Giants through in fifth. Have a look at the slow-mo action. Number 136 into it early. That was Maddie Wise. A little bit of help from Nick Valance. But 41, Jason Long, as I said, reigns on the Hawkeyes' parade here and dispatches them from any chance of repeating their two-time back-to-back championship. So the big crowd absolutely loving this. Their favourite starting to come to the fore. This is the Busters versus the Lions. The Bay Park Busters versus the Great Britain Lions. Interesting to note, Frankie Wayman Jr. Uh, down to start, but I didn't see his car. 37, Chris Cowley gets away and immediately uh, tangles with one of the Busters. So they're taken out of contention early on. 39, there is Kyle Fraser and he shows the 207 the wall. And that was uh, Ben Herdman. So Ben Herdman might be the replacement for Frankie Wayman. We'll keep an eye on that for you. 37 of Cowley gets tangled up with the 39 of um, uh, Kyle Fraser. Fraser gets away. Cowley a little bit slow getting away. 152 in the mix as well. That's Neil Scotton. He's been here a couple of times before. He's here in 2014 and 2015. Mark Costello. 
trying to uh, line up the 207 of Ben Herdman. I believe Fairhurst got upside down twice in the previous heat. And I know that the engineers and mechanics have been super busy in the Great Britain Lions team as uh, the 41 of Bruce Williams into the mix here as well, trying to take on Neil Scoffin, manages to do so, but that allows Cowley to get a little bit further up the field and uh, get into the back of Kerry Remnant, one of the uh, veterans for the Busters. He gets double teamed there by the 152 of Scoffin. It's gonna take more than that to put out uh, Remnant, I would think. Scoffin continues on and then gets lined up by the 39 of Kyle Fraser. Well, the action's breaking out all across the circuit. The 207 of Ben Herdman getting turned around. And then it's Costello, uh, thanks to Neil Scoven. So it's tit for tat at the moment, but the 39 of Kyle Fraser out in the front for the moment. Remnant into the concrete hard, courtesy of Neil Scoven. That's the second time that these two have met in this 12-lapper. It is on for young and old. Uh, the Britons finishing second last year. The Bay Park Busters. Uh, a little bit further down than that. But they're putting up a pretty good account of themselves at the moment. Williams goes round. 98, Costello getting a little bit of help from Chris Cowley. Cowley showing them the bumper and it spins Costello. So he spins out of the front running position here at Palmerston North. Williams gets uh, put back as well from the 207 of Ben Herdman. Herdman wasn't in the first heat of course, but uh, Lee Fairhurst was. But Fairhurst, uh, two damage to continue. This is the 152 of Neil Scoven. Once again, he gets together with Kerry Remnant, disposes of Remnant, continues on his way. He'd be the best placed of the British Lions at the moment, but I think it's still the 39 out in the front, and that is Kyle Fraser for the Bay Park Busters. So the Busters looking set to pick up the uh, maximum 100 points. 41 about to be fixed up there by um, Neil Scoven. He's got a bit of a problem, his Williams, a bit of an oil leak by the look of it, coming from the side of the 41. No problems for this man, though. The 39 will see the chicken flag first, and that means that Kyle Fraser picks up the win and the 100 points for the Bay Park Busters. So the Busters over the Great Britain Lions, it's Fraser and Costello, first and second for the Busters, then it was Cowley and Herdman, and then the veteran Kerry Remnant threw in fifth place. And that means that the Bay Park Busters will finish fifth overall for the night. Well, we are getting down to the business end here at the uh, NZ Teams Championship for 2018. This is the runoff for third and fourth, and it is the Stratford Scrappers versus the Hawke's Bay Hawkeyes. Remember, a new team for the Hawkeyes. They finished first last year. Stratford Scrappers were seventh. Adam Groom, the first away for the Hawkeyes. And uh, fixing him up, the number 26 of Mitch Vickery for the Scrappers and Vickery's going to come out the winner in this one and he'll go into an early lead. Around goes the 52 of Johnson. They're on board here with uh, Vickery, taking in the 53 productions on board shots. So he's already got a healthy lead, so he's obviously designated the runner in this one. The rest of them just helping out. This is Regan O'Brien uh, getting into the side of him was Paul Johnson. Not able to make it stick though as their battle continues. Big hit coming in from Tarrant. And the 26 climbing the wall on, all on his own, and that was Mitch Vickery. You're on board with him here as he kisses the concrete here in Palmerston North. Takes a licking but keeps on ticking because he stays in the front. Randall Tarrant high up on the outside group in the 66 looking for some action here. Johnson slowed by the number nine of Adam Groom. They both get going again. This is Vickery. Now is he still the race leader here, or has Tarrant gone by him? Pick that up for you in a little while. Vickery up on the outside, there's Tarrant on the inside of it. Misses him as they, they look in for the close, and the two of the Hawkeyes misses the scrapper, and that means that this man is in the front of the field, number 26, Mitch Vickery. You're on board here with Matty Wise, number 136 from the bay, and he's got a problem, he's spun all on his own. 
Vickery gets close, misses the damage of Wise and continues on at the front of the field. Back on board here with Vickery, slamming into the back of Regan O'Brien, trying to push O'Brien out of the way. Goes in for the second shot. Vickery hits the concrete hard. Has that slowed down his progress? No, he keeps on going. But now he's got Tarrant on his tail by the look of it. And Tarrant's already had a bit of a speech from uh, the officials in the first heat. He's uh, loaded for beer here tonight at Palmerston North and he's trying to chase down the 26. Meantime, the block is coming in. Number 136 there, Mandy Wise, looking for an inside shot on Vickery. Can't get it done. You're right on board here with Wise. This is Mitch Vickery. Now getting uh, double teamed there. Gary Johnson helping out as well. The 52 of O'Brien from uh, the Hawks Bay Hawkeyes in the mix too. Around goes the 82 of Paul Johnson. It's not going to matter too much though. He was just being used as a blocker. And then Gary Johnson going round as well, courtesy of uh, Matey Wise by the look of it. These two will keep going, I think, as they slide into the concrete wall, trying to halt their progress here. O'Brien just squeezing out Johnson. Back on board here with Vickery. And he's saying to the number 75, Carl Shearer there that we've got this one in the bag and they have because it is all the Stratford Scrappers at the moment running line and stern for the first three Tarrant looking to halt the progress of Paul Johnson manages to do so spins him out of the way so he moves up into fourth place now oh, there's a problem for Vickery he was the race leader but he slowed dramatically he's got problems with the left front so that means that the 52 now Gary Johnson could be the race leader but he's now preoccupied with O'Brien and coming round the outside of him is Carl Shearer but he's not in the mix at this stage these two getting together as they work their way around Tarrant's the one you got to watch for he punches Shearer out of the way and he crosses the line and a wobbly Vickery will go across the line in second place so Randall Tarrant gets the win at the last part of the last lap for the Hawkeyes, but it's not enough to stop the Scrappers going through. They pick up third place and the bronze medal here at the NZ Superstock Teams Championships for 2018. Randall Tarrant doing the work for the Hawkeyes. So we come down to the final event here in Palmerston North. It is the Gisborne Giants versus the Palmerston North Panthers. The Giants from Gisborne with the Rees family in the controls as well. But it is the number three of Jordan Deere that goes into the front. And he's found the concrete pretty hard, courtesy of uh, number 127, Ethan Rees. Ethan Rees on a bit of a charge. And that's taken off the left front of Peter Bingston. And there's going to be repercussions here as you're right on board here with Jack Myers. 127, Ethan Rees gets the tap from his dad. Have a look at it on the replay. We take the Lucas Oil replay, and Ethan Rees does for Peter Bingston. Plucks off the left front. So we're back underway. Rees on Rees, son versus father. You're on board here with Jack Myers. Trying to get around the Rees juggernaut. Doesn't manage to do so. Ethan shows him the concrete. Well, it is on for young and old here. They're a famous Palmerston North people, but their rivals today, we're talking about the Rees versus the Myers. Ethan Rees, the son of a famous father in Peter. Jack Myers, the son of a famous father in Scotty. Scotty, the team manager for the Palmerston North Panthers. Jordan Deere trying to get into the side of the 41 of Jason Long, trying to take him out of the equation. You're right on board here with Jack Myers. Big, heavy contact there between uh, Myers and uh, Peter Rees. Peter Rees goes in for a second go as well, and it spins Myers around. Rees continues on. There is the uh, New Zealand champion, William Humphreys, in the mix as well, trying to fix up Ethan Rees. Streaking through the middle of them, though, is the 41 of Jason Long. Now, has Long got to the front here? Trying to halt his progress is uh, the 31 of Gary Davis. Off onto the infield, spinning backwards is uh, number one, William Humphreys. Now it's the 3NZ for the Palmerston North Panthers. Humphreys gets upside down nearly, manages to get it back on all four again. Gary Davis stuck in that bunch as well. There is the race leader, that's number three, and that is Jordan Deere. Getting caught up with Peter Rees. Rees is trying to spin him round, can't get the job done. Ethan Rees slams into the back of Jack uh, Myers. Now, has Jordan Deere got going again? The number three NZ, there's Myers, he's mobile again. There is Peter Rees. And not too far away from Peter will be Ethan. 
and down the inside comes the three and that'll be for the front running I would think and there's nothing that Jason Long can do about it at the moment and Long hits the concrete and so too does uh, the three of Jordan Deere. You're on board here with Jack Myers, he's the blocking role at the moment, slams into the side of Peter Rees and spins him round, low love loss between I'm sure what used to be one of his heroes when he was growing up, 41 Williams slams into the back of the three NZ, he rides the concrete but he keeps it going and I think he stays in the front. Jordan Deere, is he going to carry the day here for the Palmerston North Panthers? They've won 17 titles. Are they going to make it 18? Into the concrete goes Breeze. Another heavy contact into the back of Jack Myers. Meantime, it is a wounded now. Jordan Deere still circulating. Myers doing, uh, doing the job as the blocker. Here is Deere, he's got problems in the rear of the car, but he stays in the front. 58, Bankston back into it on three wheels. Doing a brilliant job from the back of the field. Gary Davis trying to hold Jack Myers, can't get it done. Meantime, this man, well, I think he's down to around about five or six five cylinders now by the look of it. As he works his way slowly but surely around towards the flag position, Jack Myers trying to hold out Williams. It's a battle for the Miners. You're on board here with Myers taking the 53 production photo. Slamming into the back of him is the 31 from Gisborne, and that's Gary Davis. Tucked in behind them is the 1NZ going again, and that's William Humphreys. All these guys don't matter in the final. It's the first one across the line, and it, for the moment it looks like it's going to be Jordan Deere riding the concrete up high. Is Gary Davis that tips it over. That's going to bring along the reds, I'm sure of it. We have a red line in the final here at Palmerston North. Have a look at it on the replay from Jack Myers' uh, vision. Take the Lucas Oil replay. Here it is from a different angle. Right up the concrete goes Gary Davis. Tips onto his side. The officials throw the red and we will start again. Ethan Myers gets away. Tries to tag William Humphreys. Can't get it done. Peter Rees looking after Jack Myers. But in the meantime, it is the uh, number one that spins out Rees. And then Jack Myers finishes him off. So Peter Rees goes off onto the infield. Myers continues. Another big heavy contact. I think that was Ethan Rees this time. Slamming into the back of Myers. It wasn't. It was the 41. And that was Jason Long. Trying to get around Jack Myers. Can't do it for the moment. Meantime, race leader continues to be the 3 NZ. And that is Jordan Deere. They've left him alone for the moment, gee whiz, they haven't left Jack Myers alone. He gets slammed into once again, Jason Long the culprit. Long has shown the concrete, Myers keeps on going. And there is the three NZ. Now he is the race leader for the moment, but he's wounded. Here comes the big charge coming from Jason Long. Can't get a decent hit on Jordan Deere and the chicken flag comes out. No, I think it was the white. He's still got to negotiate 440 yards in the old language. Now is he able to do it? Humphrey's trying to fix up Long. He knows that he's a danger while the wounded Jordan Deere continues on his way. Humphreys can't get long out of the place, he's tried everything. But this man is going to crawl across the finish line and win for the Panthers once again. 18 titles now for the Palmerston North Panthers here at Palmerston North. Jordan Deere picks up the win. In second place it is William Humphrey, so Palmerston North 1 and 2. And then a gallant effort from Jason Long and Ethan Rees. Have a look at the highlights and there was plenty. This is the eventual race winner. This is Jordan Deere heading up the concrete. Peter Benson into the wall as well. But it is the Panthers once again. The Red Walker with the chequered flag, although Wayne Hemi took no part in the final. These boys just proved that they're blooming good. Uh, you know, they can block, they can run, they can read a race, and, and that's awesome. That's what you need in a team's racing rule. You know, blooming good. Hey, I might be able to retire shortly. <laughs> oh, it's great. Hey, you know, we're bringing some new fellows in, and, um, you know, we've won this championship ten times, and I decided after that it was time to retire about three years ago and help these young fellows come through. Now to bring them through to a victory, you know, we've got a couple of older guys here like Pete and Wayne, they're on the edge, they're giving it away and I just want to keep bringing young blood through and uh, groom them up and uh, so we can sort of have this every year. I didn't know what was going on out there, I mean I took a few big shots and I had a feeling I was still in the lead because I've seen a lot of the Gisborne cars in the wall. You know the boys just done such an awesome job of destroying the other, their cars, my car was destroyed but I saw that chequered flag come out and oh, amazing, words don't describe. Well, a gallant performance from the Gisborne Giants, but an even better one from the Palmerston North Panthers. They win 
for the 18th time here at the Robertson Holden International Speedway. It is the 2018 running of the NZ Superstock Championship and it goes to William Humphreys, to Jordan Deere, to Peter Bengston, to Jack Myers and to Wayne Hemi. The Palmerston North Panthers win again here on their home track. This is the must-see motorsport event of the year in New Zealand. Make sure you book early because you won't get a ticket. It'll be a sellout again next year. We'll see you then.